mid-November, and I promised a twiggery pokery arrangement. So I'm going to do one of those for number one Bruton. And while I'm up the field, I'm collecting a little bit of foliage because I've got to do a small event uh, with flowers. Um, so it's a busy afternoon ahead. Come along with me. Let's go and cut some twigs. If you're new to the channel, you're very welcome. Do press the subscribe button. Press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks I give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee or better still, join my club. Uh, the links to coffee buying and club membership are in the blurb to all my clips. And if you're wondering what I do, I'm a flower farmer and florist based between fashionable Bruton and up and coming Wincanton here in not very sunny today, Somerset. And I make clips about growing flowers, gardening, wildlife gardening, and floristry mostly using material from my garden. During the winter, I order in from my colleagues in Cornwall, but I only ever use British grown flowers. And I'm very keen to encourage people to use flowers from, if not their immediate locality, certainly not flown in from abroad. On we go. I'm filling my buckets out of habit, really. It's mid-November and cutting foliage from up the field, the sap is not riding. It won't wilt without water, but... Oh, tea cake. Tea, tea cake is my border terrier. And she thinks I'm talking to a person. I am talking to a person, I'm talking to you. Um, I'm putting water in buckets, not very much, but it means that I can put the material standing up in the buckets and it won't fall over, it won't bruise. And at this time of the year, it's been very wet. I don't want to bash and bruise my foliage as I, as I, as I walk around harvesting. So that's why I'm filling my buckets, not because the foliage needs water to survive, but to give me a base to put it all in while I harvest. So for the event, lovely ivy. Rosemary smells delicious. Silvery brachyglottis. Oh, yes. Lovely viburnum bodnantense. Not yet in flower. Lovely sweet scented flower later in the winter. But look at the red stems. Mmm, you wait till you see what I put it with. It's going to be lush. And still flowering, and who am I to waste it? But the Cerinthi major purpurescens begging to be cut. And last but not least, delicious scented bay. And now for twiggery pokery. We're looking for colour, contrast, and a contrasting texture and different shapes. So we definitely have some bright orange willow for a start. The curly willow behind me hasn't lost its leaves yet, but for the purposes of my twiggery pokery, I can help it along with that. Look closely at poplar and you'll find buds for next spring. And in the warm of the room where this arrangement is going to stand, you will be able to smell the propolis, the sticky warm propolis in these buds. If I squeeze them, they'll burst. I don't want to do that because it'll look ugly. Um, but the scent will gently scent the room. Plus also nice, look, nice twiggery pokery. That's pretty stuff. And look closely at the fallen, falling leaves off the hazel and you'll see catkins coming. So I'm going to pick some branches with catkins for interest. Keep an eye out for twigs with lichen. Always adds interest. And in my book, seed heads count as twiggery pokery too. And one more for luck. I love the bifurcation and the fat buds on the lime trees. So we'll have some of them 
for interest and they're pink when you look closely. <laughs> Hard to show you against the light, but they are, they're pink. And when you stand back from a tree in the winter, you don't necessarily see the color and the fine shapes. So I suggest, strongly recommend that you go and look at trees without their leaves on and see how attractive they are. They literally reach out to you. Sometimes I feel a tree pat me on the head as I go by and I feel as though they're greeting me. Call me a lunatic by all means. Look, lovely buds. Lovely buds, pink. And since somebody I know is going to ask me, it says on my hand that I've got to a, a, do a show, I mean a, a demo at the Bruton Horticultural Society on Monday and I'm having my hair cut at nine o'clock on Saturday. And these are two things I could easily forget. So I've written them on my hand in indelible felt pen. It's Thursday. And yes, when a tree pats me on the head and greets me as I walk past, I greet it in return. Because I feel as though we do all reach out and sort of say hello to each other. We live together, the trees and me, the trees and you. We're all in the same, they're all in the same boat. So if a tree pats you on the head as you're passing by, don't jump sky high, <laughs> turn round and greet it in return. Good morning. Nearly done, but oh look, wild carrot seed heads. I should cocoa. I'll have a few. Leave some for the birds, leave some to seed about and some for me. And speaking of colour, shape and texture, yes, dock. glorious stuff. Very nearly done but look at the buds on this black willow. Very very dark aubergine coloured willow with beautiful buds and these stems are too narrow for using for my wreathing and so I'll have a few and I'll take the leaves off to be in my twiggery pokery arrangement. Right I'm really here to do the twiggery pokery arrangement but this is what I've made with the foliage that we were cutting earlier and some lovely British grown flowers. We've got Hesperantha lilies, little feverfew, anemones, which will come out in the warmth of the house, um, lovely sea holly, and all of the other bits and pieces that we cut, and some amazing, luxurious dark red chrysanthemums. Those of you who know me well know I'm not a big fan, but actually, time and a place, they work very well. Uh, right, so these are all ready to go out for delivery. Let's make a twiggery pokery arrangement. Right, so we're finally going to get onto this twiggery pokery arrangement. I've got a heavy stoneware jar. It's worth having some weight because otherwise, if you get something quite top heavy, it'll pull it over. And I'm not going to put any water in this. Uh, so just, you know, less. Um, but it's quite a heavy jar, it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to put an old frog in the bottom because then it gives me, I can have some, be a bit directional with my material. And I've got a little bit of plastic coated chicken wire. I use this stuff again and again and again, and it's just gonna pop in the top. And again, it's just gonna help me with the direction of the, of the stems. It's fallen in. Give me a minute. That's better. I've reached in, in amongst the spiders <laughs> and the spider's webs. And, um, and I've just rearranged the uh, chicken wire. So it's sitting in the top like that. Here's another thing I do. Okay, this is not officially feng shui, but I do think it kind of makes sense. This jar always goes in the same place, in the same room at number one Bruton. 
and it's a pouring jar, it's a water jar. And this is the spout. And I always have the spout facing the fireplace because I feel as though if I had the spout facing the corner of the room, then all the good energy that comes from the water jar, which is not even gonna have any water in it, will kind of be wasted into the corner of the room. Whereas, if I have the spout facing the fireplace, then they kind of work, they kind of work together, it sort of understands each other. I do the same if I'm doing a jug for number one Bruton, all of that. <laughs> Call me a loony, by all means. Um, anyway, uh, this lunatic is now going to take all of those twigs that we made, that we collected, and put them in the, in the vase. And I'm just gonna let this play as I go. Actually, I'm gonna put it on the whizzy whizzy, but the point I'm going to make before I do that is if you're doing a twiggery pokery arrangement, don't overthink it. Allow the twigs to make their own shapes. Look at what you're doing and allow the material you're working with to dictate how it's going to work. You cannot come to a twiggery pokery arrangement with any preconceptions about what it's going to look like. You must just let the twigs speak to you. Um, after all, they've been patting you on the head as you walk past for a long time. So you have a good relationship. Let them do what they want to do. Stand back, look. Don't assume that anything that you make with a bunch of twigs is going to look how you imagine it's going to look before it. This is, this is entirely going to be driven by the twigs. So I'll put it on the whizzy thing and then we'll have a look at it at the end, okay? Very annoying. I've been doing this and it's not been filming. So <laughs> unfortunately for you, I'm not going to completely undo it, um, but I'm gonna finish it off. As you can see, I've got most of my twigs in there. I'm just adding now these lovely stems of dark willow with the buds and I'm taking the leaves off. I've taken the leaves off nearly everything because this is twiggery pokery. <laughs> this is not a leafy arrangement. We did that last week, didn't we? Um, do go back and have a look if you haven't seen it. Uh, this week we're doing twigs and so I'm just taking off these willow leaves there's been a lot of willow leaf taking off in here this last week. Look how lovely, aren't they gorgeous? And I'm gonna pop these in. You've gotta remember, you've gotta remember where an arrangement like this is going to go. And so I know this is going on a lowish round table next to the fire in the drawing room at number one. I've got to make sure the twigs don't come too far forward. I don't want them to be a health and safety risk for the guests. guests. So I'm keeping it relatively upright so that it doesn't stick out too far. And it's also got a flat back because it's almost going against the wall. It's always worth remembering where something's going to be put. Right, I'll bring you up closer and show you before I add any seed heads. We've got some final details to go, but I'll just show you where we are so far. Now look, how attractive. There's a little bit of leaf, but not too much. And all the twigs are different. There's lots of different colour. Here's the dark, the dark red willow, the orange willow, the curly green willow is very green. The fat stems of the poplar with their lovely juicy spring buds. The pink, okay, it's a relative term, but I call that pink of the lime. It's a really, and there are some, if you look, it's one of those things you kind of need to look at and then you see things the longer you look. So there are hazel catkins coming, for example. And I put a lamp up here because it's, uh, you know, the time of year, so it's getting dark. Right, I've got my details I'm going to add now. Uh, so I've got some, my seed heads and the lichen. Obviously, this isn't the same lamp that they have in the, in the hotel, but it throws a similar sort of light. So it's quite nice as a useful 
as a useful thing if you're thinking about where you're going to put something do consider this is a going against a plain pink wall nothing behind it um with quite warm light so i'll show you when i deliver it i'll deliver it in a minute i've got to hurry though because i've got a live at five in a minute right here are my lichen-y twigs this one's too fat to go through my tea cake my um my chicken wire so i'm going to break it up a bit One last piece. No, had it. And now I've got my seed heads. Carrot, wild carrot. Oh, yes. One thing you can always do if you're doing something like this is just make sure that the twigs are all standing independently, that they're not all caught up with each other. So just go through it as you make pieces. You often see florists, they'll add a stem and then they go like this and they kind of loosen everything to make sure that nothing's hooked up on anything else if they don't want it to be. It means everything stands free and um, has its own airspace. It looks lighter if you work like that. And obviously easier said than done with all these twigs. You have to feed your way, feel your way through to make space for everything. Love these. I'm taking, I'm taking the ragged leaves off. I want these to look meant. So I'm having them tidy. They're, you know, that's a dock, that's do a dock seed head, isn't it? Dramatic and marvelous. Yeah. There. If they get any bullfinches in the hotel, they've got something to eat. And this is hogweed. In the summer, I would say be very careful handling these stems because you get phytosensi <laughs> phytosensitivity, the sap on your skin with the sun causes horrible blistering. Um, Oh, 
I'm cutting them down a little bit. I don't want them to be taller than the twigs. great there will be more i mean i i have not taken all of them a i've left some for the birds but b they look great frozen so if we ever get a frost this winter these will be photographed frozen doing something like this you've got absolutely no more space to get anything through the chicken wire so long as things are being held up by their neighbors because there's no water in here these are all dead stems it doesn't matter if they don't fit right in you can just tuck them so that they're held up I'll take you cl I'll take you closer for a really close up look but um to the naked eye it looks much better than it does on film but I think when I get it to number one and put it against the pink wall it's really going to sing so I'll give you a close up here and then let's go and deliver it it's 20 to 4 I've got to get back from my live at 5 and then I'll, tomorrow I'm off to London for the Garden Media Guild Awards woohoo uh and next week I've got a, f a wedding flower so you know Nothing stops just because it's November and I haven't even planted my tulips bells yet and I haven't given you a tour of November garden yet. <sighs> Running out of time. I love this warm light on it. And you can't see, I mean, you can, if you look carefully, you can see the wire, but it doesn't show because there's enough material in there. Slightly have to pull away so that I don't poke you in the eye with the twigs sticking forward. But though I say it myself, I think that's very attractive. And there, if you like, that's your 30 stem challenge for this weekend. Is twiggery pokery from the garden arranged in a vase. And there she is, all the drama. Lots to look at. Very good against the pink. Nice contrast of the chandelier dangles. The green bars, very simple. And there outside, fashionable Bruton going about its business. The twiggery pokery, there you are. Are you gonna have a go? That's your 30 stem challenge for the weekend. Go into the garden and find seed heads and twigs. Signs of spring, evidence of last summer, lichen, interesting twigs, extras. See what you can find. And next week, we'll be back with flowers and doing a wedding. <laughs>